evening, Lizzie boys. I've watched two Monster High movies in the last few days. I need to put this on my camera. Yeah. And I want to review them. I want to ramble about them. So, yeah. But let's get started. First, I want to unbox this doll. Like, was I going to make a review of her? No, I didn't really want to. So we're just going to... I don't remember. They're my scissors. Okay. So first we're going to unbox this doll and then I'm going to start rambling about the movies because, you know, it's my channel. I can make whatever content I want. And the content I want to make is vaguely violent. I don't think I would have been able to stretch a review of this doll out into 10 minutes anyway. I don't know why I paid full price for this doll at Target. I should have just waited for it to go on sale because now they're like way cheaper and I already... I invested too much. Why is this so difficult? Look at that. That's cute. This is cute. It's a cute little... Why are you wearing a high school emblem when you're a junior high schooler? You're like a middle schooler. You're like six years old. Oh no, where's the doll? Here she is! Um, she's got the neck articulation. It works very well. It's much more fluid. Um, overall her joints work very well. She's cute. I really like Band-Aid Jade. I like her shorter hair. And overall, this doll is very cute. But of course, she's not the focus of this video. Bonk. So, um, did I just make a bonk sound effect like with my mouth? Anyway, the two Monster High movies I've watched the past two days have been Boo York, Boo York, and Great Scarier Reef. I have a more positive opinion of one of these movies over the other. So let us just begin. Let me just start with Boo York, because, you know. Stay on her face. Stay. Okay, it's not gonna stay. Let's just begin. So starting with Bjork. York. Bjork New York, New York stars Caddy Noir, and she's on her bullshit. She's doing some stuff. And Cleo Denial is, you know, her and Deuce are like a couple or something. You know what? Cleo and Deuce are actually a really cute couple. Yeah. And I actually have two basic caddies. I don't know why. I found this one at the flea market. That one I bought on eBay. I have two. That's the point. So I think Caddy's like supposed to be the main, main character, but Cleo and Deuce also have a fairly important plot point. Laguna wasn't in the movie at all. Um, she did not uh, show up. Gulia, on the other hand, was in the movie. Gulia was in the movie, good for her. Move Laguna over here, put Gulia there. And there we go, Cleo and Deuce are standing together now and everything is right in the world. Cleo and Deuce are still together in my book. They're actually very cute. This movie did a good job at fleshing out Cleo and Deuce's relationship and making me care about them. They're cute. Deuce is like, you know, not royal. Cleo is royal. But they do their best for each other because they love each other and that's so cute. And then the movie is like, oh, we're gonna break them up. And you're like, oh no, are they gonna get back together? And then they're like, yep, they are. And you're like, oh yay, they got back together. And then Haunt Couture Diaries are like, oh, we broke them up. And we're like, are they gonna get back together? And then they're like, no, he's in a two-pack with Frankie. And of course, that's all speculation, though. We don't know if it's a couple's two-pack or what. Anyway, um, so these four go to Boo Five. These five go to Boo York. Plus Operetta. I don't know why Operetta was there. She just kind of was. And while they're there, uh, Nephra is doing some stuff. And I don't know where my Nephra... There she is. Nephra's doing some evil deeds. And basically, Cleo has to get engaged to some dude who is in love with Caddy. The dude's in love with Caddy, not Cleo. And, um, you know, it's a good movie. It's a nice movie. I enjoyed watching it. It's just a little difficult and hard to follow because the thing about Monster High movies is that they're always very fast paced. There's always a lot of stuff going on and it's just hard to keep up, I guess. <laughs> okay, let me try to describe the plot again. We start out with Caddy trying to write a song. She sings two songs in the first three minutes of the movie. Like, two full-length songs. I, I don't know how she did, but she did. And then these ghouls walk in, and they're like, Oh, Caddy, you're struggling to write a song. Oh, Caddy. And she's like, Yep, I, I'm bad at this. She's trying to write a love song, but I've never been in love. And, you know, that's really good foreshadowing. Telling us that a character's never been in love in a movie where they're going to New fucking York. That's, like, the most romantic place in the world, you know, with all the rats and the rats and the, and the rats. There's a lot of rats in New York. And, um, I don't know, I've never been there before, but, um, no, wait, I have been in New York. I have been there. 
<laughs> I always forget that I've been there because it was only like for like one day. But, um, you know, I'm getting off topic. So Cleo is like, yo, we have to go to New York because there's going to be this comet show and my family is there. So she brings these four five because operetta is a part of the movie and abby and gulia stay back and they're dealing with a weird comet in the sky how did gulia find the comet i don't know it never gets explained never gets explained we don't we don't know how she found the comet but um she and abby are trying to deal with it and then manny tour shows up sorry i used to do a manny voice when i was younger i'd be going like Moo! and i sounded just like him it was hilarious okay good he still has his nose ring i was worried i lost it for some reason <laughs> um but yeah, basically Manny and Heath show up and they're besties, they're besties. And they're trying to play it like a video game and Gulia's like, oh my god, it's a video game. But you know, she doesn't say that because Gulia only talks like, ah, ah, you know, because that's how, that's how she sounds. So they get to New York and they immediately meet all of our quirky new characters. I have them. We got Luna and we got Elle and I have Mercedes somewhere. Mercedes was more likable in the movie than I expected. She was just a quirky New York girl who knew her way around town i don't know what i'm doing here i think i'm trying to cast a spell but um basically there's a character in the movie who's like really important but didn't get a doll compared to those three you know l luna and mercedes who honestly we could have done without i feel like seth slash pharaoh really deserved a doll he was major in the movie he should have at least been in a two-pack with caddy's doll i don't have boo york caddy I wish I did, but, um, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the movie's pretty good, um, so the Seth and Caddy, they meet, and they're, like, singing and stuff, and they're into each other, they're into each other, but Nephora doesn't like that, because Seth is supposed to be engaged with Cleo, so she gets deuced to break up with Cleo, because she's like, yo, you're not good enough for my sister, and he's like, oh, fuck, you're right, dude, I suck, so he breaks up with Cleo, and Cleo's like, oh, no, he broke up with me, and, you know, like, they, like, genuinely like each other, they like each other so bad, and, um, um, I'm sorry, I got distracted, I was looking at my brat's shelf again. Basically, Bjork is good, it's a little fast-paced, so you need to be, like, eyes glued on the screen so you know what's going on. But it's a really good movie overall. I liked it. But then, then, we get to Great Scarier Reef with all the fish people. We got fish Torali over here. Yo, doesn't, doesn't that what everyone, kid, isn't that what everyone wanted? Torali is a fish. Quirky characters like Posia's tail, Posy's tail, because I can't get her off the shelf. And Great Scarier Reef was not very good. It was uninspired. And they added the weirdest plot point. Laguna can dance good. And, but has stage fright. But here's why that doesn't make sense. Do y'all remember the Dance Class 5 pack? With, um, you know, it included Rebecca, Gil, Rochelle, Operetta. Who's the fifth? Laguna! She was in Dance Class. She's in the 5 pack. She danced on stage in Dance Class. And she wasn't scared of it at all. But then when Gil sees her dancing, she's like, Oh, you can't tell anyone. You're not allowed to tell anyone. Mate. I'm, I'm a dancer and you can't tell anyone that I'm good at it. Everyone knows you can dance. You were in Dance Class, woman. You were in Dance Class! Can you tell I'm getting heated over this? Why am I getting heated over a Monster High movie? But... I don't know, it's just such a nonsensical, bare-bones plot to go off of. Especially when it makes no sense at all. No sense. Because we already know that she can dance because of dance class. Sure, it might have been like a forgotten fact or something, but it feels like they rewrote her just to make this movie. And it wasn't a good movie either. It sucked. The entire plot is that Laguna has to get over her stage fright. She has to deal with her freaky flaw. And then Tora lies there, and, you know, she has, like, some character development. She's like, huh, maybe I shouldn't be such a bitch to everyone all the time. But, you know, like, that's that's a good plot for her. Can you tell I like Tora lie? But then the villain is Kala Marie, that four-armed purple freak. I feel bad calling her a freak, because the whole point of the movie, she's like, oh, I'm a kraken, but everyone bullies my dad because he's a kraken, and he's big and dangerous, and he he breaks buildings sometimes when he's mad, but, you know, he's not, he's not a bad guy. <laughs> Her dad ends up being cool. He's fine. But, like, I feel like I have Kala up here somewhere. I don't see her. Uh, okay, maybe I don't have Kala up here. But I know I have Kala. She's somewhere. 
Uh, two heads back there, too. Perry and Pearl. Oh, my God. I almost fell. Perry and Pearl are important to the movie, too. Kinda. Not really. You could remove them and the plot would stay the same. Pretty much all they do is uh, Pearl, the one with white hair, kisses Kala's ass like the entire movie except for one part where they get stuck under a rock, both of them, because, you know, they're attached. They get stuck under a rock and Kala's like, I'm not helping you guys. Fuck you. Uh, Fuck you. Yeah, wrong finger. And then they're like, oh my god, maybe she's not that cool. And Perry doesn't like Kala at all. Perry's the blue-haired one. and So they're like on this side. Like, this is Perry, this is Pearl. She's annoying. She's a pushover. That's it. I don't know. I just feel like towards the end, Monster Eye started adding a lot of unnecessary characters. Like, the three girls in New York, the three ghouls in New York. Boo York. Kind of unnecessary. I liked Luna. She was cool. Elle was nice, too. Mercedes ended up being okay. The movie made me like those three more. But when it comes to the new characters that they added for Great Scarier Reef, the only one I liked was Posia. Posey! Posey. Posey. You get it? Because it has the word C in her name. But yeah, basically that's like, that's what the movie's about. It's like, I don't want to bash the movie too hard because it was like, it featured a kid. It featured a -a make-a-wish kid. And you know, like, I don't want to like bash on the movie because, you know, that kid's like basically dying wish was to be in the movie. That's what Make-A-Wish is for, usually. Sometimes the kids live, but most of the time they do not. And that's why they get to do one super cool thing one last time. So, you know, I think it was cool that the kid got to be in the movie. I think she voiced Laguna's sister? I don't actually know. I don't know who the kid voiced. But, um, point is, the movie wasn't very good. I feel bad saying that, but... It was just a really mediocre movie. I'd give it like a 3 to 4 out of 10, 3.5 out of 10. Whereas with Boo York, I would probably give it like a 9, 8 out of 10, 8, 9 out of 10, 8.5 maybe. Boo York was good fun. It's just like, it's kind of bittersweet to look back on that movie and remember that they broke Cleo and Deuce up in the Haunt Couture Diaries for no reason. (laughs) Hopefully Cleo's diary will feature a little story where they like get back together or something. Maybe Laguna's, maybe both of them. Maybe Coolia will get a Haunt Couture doll. Maybe Abby will get a Haunt Couture doll. But you know, uh, point is, um, why the fuck is Claudine's doll from Great Scarier Reef purple? She looks so out of place on my shelf. I forgot to mention this. The ending of the movie is that Kala sees a poster that says, be yourself, be unique, be a monster. And then she's not evil anymore. She's like, oh, I I can go to school here and people will like me. Yeah, if they forgive you for destroying the school, maybe. So yeah, in short, I really like New York. Great Scarier Reef I could do without. If you guys want more film reviews from Lizzie, let me know. I don't know. This was fun to make, though. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Thank you guys for watching this video. It was fun to make. I got to talk a lot, my throat's very dry, and I need to paint my nails. So thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!